Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for boxing news and views from around the internet. Joseph Parker returns this weekend to face Shondell Winters on the Mikey Garcia and Jesse Vargas card in Frisco, Texas. His first fight for 2020 and a fight not really many fans are wanting to see, nor did they call for it. But it's his fight nonetheless and he's in a bit of a damned if he does and damned if he doesn't sort of situation. Because uh, Shondell Winters, an unheralded heavyweight, a former cruiserweight who's come up, he's had a couple of good wins at the weight, a couple of upsets in 2019 but mostly unheralded and below the radar he's been foisted up to face parker in this fight which is seen as a tune-up by many but if parker goes more rounds than he should against shondell winters the knives will be out from some quarters but also joseph parker hasn't been in the ring since june 2019 when he fought alex leopai so he's in desperate need of some rounds he actually does need a bit of work in there because he could end up having a big 2020 depending on different outcomes remembering he's the number two in the wbo so there could be a potential that he could face alexander Usyk if a title becomes vacant that's seemingly looking like a less likely prospect at this point but this is the second of his three fights with matchroom and two have now been chewed up so matchroom and for parker's sake as well he needs a big fight next so this third fight on his deal he i'm sure with everyone who supports him and is just following the heavyweight division in general want to see him in a big fight because let's face it his last proper fight in terms of a big big time fight was in July 2018 against Dillian White. So the past 18 to 20 months, he really hasn't done too much. There was Alexander Flores as a tune-up confidence win at the back end of 2018, Leopai in 2019, and now Shondell Winters. So it's been a run of tune-ups. It's been a lean time for Joseph Parker. Some of that's been down to bad luck and some of it bad management. Remembering he could have fought Derek Chisora in April 2019, but his team didn't like the seven weeks or so that they would have for a training camp so they declined the offer to face Derek Chisora later in 2019 he could have fought Chisora again the fight was made but he pulled out through a spider bite so he needs uh, a big 2020 he needs a big fight at some point but he's got Shondell Winters in front of him this weekend and both of them very sort of circumspect at the press conference which was held only up there for a minute or so each both saying what you would expect them to say Winters the heavy underdog saying look I'm not just here to make up the numbers I'm here to to fight i believe i can beat joseph parker i'm going to come and give it all you know give it my all joseph parker meanwhile talking up his preparations that he's feeling good he's been working on some things and he's looking to uh, put on a performance when he faces shondell winters they were both very cordial and um saying good things about the other uh, but joseph parker make no mistake he is the heavy favorite for a reason former wbo champion still regarded by many as a top 10 fighter he's looking for a path back to a world title although the past 18 months or so it's been a bit lean on the fight front so he's probably doing well to have um, elevated himself to number two in the wbo rankings but how he looks this weekend will determine fan perception of Joseph Parker. And having run this channel for a length of time and covered numerous Joseph Parker fights, it's an interesting position because one, I'm from New Zealand. I see the New Zealand perspective. But two, with most of my views, 95 or 96 percent of my views coming from overseas, you know, the international flavor of uh, perception about Parker uh, is not good right now. People don't see him as a threat and someone who's going to rise again. I was talking about this recently on my Patreon. I think him and Joe Joyce have perception problems right now. And part of it for Joseph Parker is that he's seen as the old brigade, as guys who've been there, done that, and they're sort of now sort of onto the scrap heap or on the way down, etc. Whereas Joseph Parker is just 28 years old. So he has got some good years left in him. He's talked about wanting to fight until he's 30 or 31 but realistically he could go longer if he wanted to but he's got some good prime years ahead and he should be coming into the best of his career right now so it's a shame that he's uh, had a bit of a down 18 months or so because that's some of the best of his career that's come and gone and he's fought tune-up fights and we've got another one in Shondell Winters 
He needs to go out there, in my view, look sharp, really work the jab. He needs to get a knockout, a spectacular knockout to really get fans uh, at least talking about him again. Not necessarily on board because people will look at the opponent and go, well, this guy was a former cruiserweight. He's only had a few fights at heavyweight. He never faced anyone as good as you. So it's that whole damned if you do, damned if you don't. Because if this ends up going rounds or even the distance, which is a possibility, I'm sure the knives will be out and people will be saying, Joe, Joseph Parker is not a threat anymore but I think you know that sort of notion overstates the case because Winters is actually a tough and you know really rugged sort of character and he has been in some good fights recently the one with Alexander Teslenko he dominated him Teslenko was a prospect with some buzz but he handled him you know relatively easy enough and really beat him up in the end I'm not expecting the same here with um, Joseph Parker but I am expecting it's probably going to be a bit tougher than some people imagine I could see this one going rounds and that's where the perception issue comes in because if it does go rounds and maybe he doesn't look a million percent you know through the whole thing people are going to be looking at this with a bit of a stank eye going what's going on here what's wrong with Joseph Parker when in reality it might be nothing but after a length of time out of the ring as well he will be better for any rounds that he does get if it's three or four if it's eight or nine because this is a 10 round fight uh, all the rounds will be good because he needs some activity ahead of what probably is going to be a good fight you know the next fight out it's going to be the third of his matchroom contract and I'm sure matchroom don't want to have him just having continuous tune-ups because then they don't get their money's worth as well but getting back to Winters and Parker, my official prediction is a Joseph Parker win. I think Winters will come and he'll fight. He'll give Joseph Parker his all, but it won't be enough. And I could see this going to a decision or a knockout, but um, I'm just going to say Parker is going to win this one. I think there will be spots where he looks really good. And other times people might go, what's on with Joseph Parker? That's just, you know, what happens in this day and age. If people don't get a slick performance and you don't knock someone out in the first 30 seconds or first round, then you're written off. So I could totally see that happening. But he will be better for any rounds he gets. But what do you make of this fight? Who's going to win and how? Do you see a knockout or do you see Winters coming better than advertised I certainly think he's going to be a bit more of a handful than um, a lot of people think I'm not saying he's going to win but he could make it tougher than people expect drop a comment loud and often hit like hit subscribe follow me on twitter boxing underscore squared I'm out